Divine Demigod, thank you for becoming a patron. You are what keeps the dream alive. What's up, everybody? Do right back at it again to talk about a big new update that's coming in for Postscriptum. And it's coming in relatively soon here, the 23rd of April to be exact, with the Americans basically getting an overhaul and the Germans getting a new faction. So let's go ahead and jump into their little dev blog that they have here on Steam to really see what's new. This one is dubbed Chapter 3, Days of Days. So first things first, they talk about a new game mode called Invasion. And according to this, it's a lot like another mode that's already featured in the game called Offensive. Those of you that don't know or maybe don't remember. Offensive is essentially one team captures multiple areas until they reach the enemy's base and then they win. The defending team isn't able to recapture those areas so it's vital for them to not allow the attacking team to get very far so it's really their job just to run out the clock. But the difference with invasion is that you have to blow things up and it could be anything from obstacles to bunkers to flat cannons and they might even throw in a couple of capture certain areas but that's mostly after you blow things up. But yeah those are the main differences is between offensive and invasion so yeah it's very similar to offensive but it does have slight differences which does make it a different mode but yeah let's move on to the next thing here they show off the first new map which is utah beach utah beach is one of the five sectors during operation overlord which is the allied invasion onto the shores of normandy in german occupied france you will attack as either the fourth infantry supported by armor from the 70th tank battalion or defending as the german 91st infantry division the utah preset within chapter 3 is not a final version later it will be expanded upon i mean i already played this map and i gotta say it's a pretty good looking map honestly better than any map that i've seen in squad it's pretty gorgeous looking and i really like the way that it's actually set out utah is one of the two new chapter 3 maps that feature the invasion game mode as mentioned in the video overview above which i played that for you a little bit ago the objective is to destroy or defend the three sets of barricades on the beach which must be destroyed before you can move on once destroyed two captures zones must be secured to establish a beachhead and grant the attacking forces a headquarters on the beach once the beachhead has been established the attacking force can move on to destroy the anti-air artillery batteries further inland which will enable the capture of the next two flags so yeah utah is a really cool map i actually really liked it when i played it and if you actually want to see the playthrough of it you could actually check that out it's in the eye icon at the top right of the video had a lot of fun uh streaming and i hope you enjoy it too but yeah so if you didn't hear what I said a little bit earlier, they're adding in a new faction, the 4th Infantry Division and 70th Tank Battalion. The 4th Infantry look a lot different. They look like uh, something out of Saving Private Ryan on the beaches. And I really like the way that the tanks look when it actually comes off of the boat. It's pretty cool. Like, it's great cover for infantry to try to push out the beach, but it can get destroyed pretty easily. So you have to be careful with that. And uh, yeah, so let's move on here. The next map is St. Mary Glees. So the previous map was basically Saving Private Ryan and this one is Band of Brothers. St. Mary Glees is a town further inland from Utah Beach and was a target of the 82nd Airborne during the night before the invasion. The German 91st Infantry Division was tasked to defend the town and heavily fortify the area with anti-air batteries. That will be the primary objective for the 82nd. So basically just blowing up the batteries, which I actually got to experience in the uh, game that I played. But the interesting thing about it is that you're kind of just like dropped all over the place. And I mean, I guess that's like the experience too, because you can actually get shot out of the sky and it's really lucky if you actually hit the ground. And if you hit the ground, you know, you're going to be surrounded by a bunch of Germans. It's actually a pretty crazy feeling, uh, you know, just hopping into that. I really liked it a lot, but yeah, moving on. So it seems as if they also have a night map and a day map. One I'm assuming is that you're attacking with the airborne and the other one you're attacking with the 82nd, I'm assuming. St. Maricles is the second map featuring the new and invasion game mode and will require the 82nd to jump into flag filled skies and make their way to the ground where they will have to locate and destroy all of the marked anti-air batteries on the map unlike utah neither team has access to air or artillery support and only the german team will have any armor since you are dropping in the middle of the night your biggest ally is the cover of darkness and the element of surprise i don't necessarily believe that one because they essentially see you when you're falling down but you know i guess when you're down in the wilderness they won't be able to see you choose your 
route through the thick hedgerows and the streets carefully. Yeah, I mean, I really liked this map and it was actually an interesting experience. It was really dark, but I mean, that's just kind of how it was. Like, I, <laughs> I just really liked it, honestly. But yeah, let's move on to the next one here. This next one here is Carantan, which I believe is the third map. And uh, let's see what it has to say here. The city of Carantan is located in the south of St. Mary Glees, southwest of Utah Beach. It was here that the 101st Airborne clashed with the 6th Folsom Jaeger Regiment. So here are the new German faction or sub faction, I would say. Two elite airborne units fought over this small town i believe this is the one that you see in uh band of brothers kind of like the the beginning town that they fight in it's pretty cool carantan features the invasion game mode as well and will require the 101st airborne to destroy generators powering the radar station in the vicinity of the town as well as an artillery battery which is shelling nearby forces both teams have access to their normal full range of support and armor assets but be careful not to get yourself stuck in narrow streets the field surrounding the city is the most most suitable place for tanks to engage while the narrow streets favor the infantry fighting seems like we're moving on to the vehicles here the next one is big daddy pump the king tiger oh my god i'm gonna butcher this the panzer camp wagon six i Constiger? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm gonna butcher these names. Or just King Tiger. is a German heavy tank designed in 1943 and manufactured up until the war ended in 1945. The tank itself weighs about 77 tons. It's 10 meter in length and it's fitted with a big cannon. This tank was considered by many the pinnacle of German tank design. In postscriptum, it's considered a heavy armor asset, much like the Tiger already present in the game. It will be playable on most of the standard maps that feature the 1944 German forces and the allied will be to approach the tank with great caution its upper front plate is over 150 millimeters thick and thus making it near impenetrable by most allied tank rounds you'll need to make use of your armor and and portable anti-tank capabilities in order to destroy the tank yeah i mean like the tiger tank in reality took like 20 shermans to actually kill like honestly i think the best thing to go up against the tiger is just the infantry itself in my opinion but we'll have to see while i was playing the beta of chapter three i never actually came up against the tiger i only saw one that was destroyed so it might not be that hard to kill because i'm assuming that we have like tnt and satchel charges and all that stuff but uh yeah let's move on to talking about the american tanks so u.s armor germany is not the only nation with new vehicles the u.s forces will get several new vehicles including the m10 wolverine tank destroyer the ma greyhound my favorite little tank armored reconnaissance vehicle the m18 hellcat tank destroyer and much more the m10 and m18 are vastly different even even though they are both tank destroyers, the M10 is slow and large, while the M18 is small and fast, but both of these feature the same weakness, being lightly armored and open-topped. They are vulnerable to infantry fire from above and enemy recon vehicles, so you need to be cautious when moving in places that grant enemy a height advantage. Oh my god, are we finally going to be able to actually throw grenades into the back of tanks? I mean, I think that's cool, but unfortunately, the hatches are always open with these tanks, which really sucks. Like, I think that the Hellcat had a good gun that could take out German tanks and was relatively fast, but its armor was basically thin as paper. I actually didn't know that the Hellcat had an open top. I didn't know that. The Wolverine, on the other hand, I mean, it looks cool. I like that they're adding it in, but the armor was thinner than the Sherman's. It had less machine guns. The top of the tank exposes the crew, and it was called Tank Destroyer, but from what I understand, it was very hard for it to actually really penetrate anything. So, I mean, I really like the tanks. I'm sure they're going to be useful at some point, but we'll really have to see. But yeah, that really does it for the update um there is currently going to be a free weekend going on as of this video the game is also going 25 percent off so if any of you guys want to try it out now would be the time i certainly had a lot of fun uh, i'm probably going to try some more out later on today but uh yeah so before i go i just wanted to say that they initially delayed the update to about three hours and uh, it seems as if they got that fixed at least right now so uh yeah everybody should be able to get into it right now and uh yeah so what are your thoughts on chapter three is this something that you're gonna try out or are you just gonna pass it up and be like nah it ain't my thing or what let me know what you think down in the comments below because i'm about to end this video if you're someone that likes the fact that i cover games like postscriptum be sure to subscribe and ding the bell if you're someone that's already subscribed and ding the bell then go ahead and like and share and leave a comment you know help the channel grow if you're someone that really wants to support the channel check out my patreon just send two bucks a month it really helps and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye